Back up. Okay. All right. Hey, Sam, thanks for doing this again. It's good to see you. Um, so they've announced a change in the practice plan, and I'm wondering about how it's going to be different for you guys with a 20-hour uh, rule when you first start, which is a lot different for both players and coaches. Can you talk about coping with the practice plan that you've got? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> looking forward – uh, on this, you basically have 40 days to get 25 practices in. You're not uh, going to have near the time, obviously, for the walks, uh, for the uh, off uh, off day meetings. What you know, we're going to have two days off instead of one now. Uh, on the on one of the off days, we can still have a two hour meeting with them. But instead of just looking forward only, you have to look back and what we've. Uh, uh, what the what the SEC has allowed us to do here recently is gain hours, times, walkthroughs that we basically are going to lose in the future. So I'll guess whenever it all uh, evens out that the time will be approximately the same. It's just going to be spread over a, a larger number of days. So, I, I mean – it is what it is. They they give us all the same rules, but uh, we do have a schedule ready. Um, I think we found out maybe yesterday, day before, uh, what what the SEC decided to do, and and we, we're ready ready to go on on our schedule. And and I you know on paper uh, we like it. Okay, and then you're going to play a t your first season in the league, and as a head coach, you're going to play a ten game all conference schedule. Just what were your thoughts when you found out that was going to be the course? And uh, did you have any input or say in the two opponents you guys pick up? Well, I've said ever since I got the job, we're in the SEC West, exactly where the University of Arkansas belongs. And uh, so – Audio's gone. What's up, Nate? But anyway um, – <laughs> but, but anyway – uh, no, I don't have any in input at all of who we play. And, uh, and the 10 game SEC schedule, uh, it is what it is. I mean, we're, we're going to have to go play. That's, that's, that's who, what our conference is. So we'll go out there and play and we're looking forward to it actually. And, and, uh, and the two opponents, we, we won't find out for another day or two. Ah, okay. Appreciate it, man. Uh-huh. Sarah. Hey, Coach. Um, I was just wondering, you know, how's the team been handling all of the news that's going on right now, the season being pushed back and, and the all-SEC schedule? I'll be honest with you. I think the kids, uh, they just want to play, you know, and, and we just want to coach. And obviously, we want to do it in the, in the safest environment we possibly can. But they want to play in uh, – when we told them that uh, as of this point that there's going to be a uh, season, they were ecstatic. I mean, it's like anything. If you work towards something, you, you, you want to reap the benefits of, of 10 Saturdays or 12 or 13 or depend on how far you go, 15, 16 games, 15 games, whatever it is, you want to be able to go play. And so they were really excited about that. And, and I was excited for them and, and, uh, our coaching staff are very excited. And has there been any position changes on the team so far? Um, we've, we've probably uh, changed a lineman, maybe from a tackle to a guard or a guard to a tackle, not specifically across the ball besides uh, uh, we had, I guess you could call it a change. We didn't, he never practiced at tight end, but, Blaine Toll moved the tight end on paper. We never had a practice or anything. And uh, before we started practicing or not practicing, but walking through and all this, we moved him back to defensive end. We thought that he could help us over there after being able to watch him run a little bit and be, seeing what his size was. And we thought he might rush the passer over there a little bit for us. So we moved him back over to, 
where we originally recruited him at. All right, Coach, thank you so much. Nikki? Coach, how are you feeling about the offensive uptick that you guys have been able to do with uh, the walkthroughs and just how everyone has, you know, picked up Kendall Bryles' offense? I tell you what, Nikki, this, this time has been invaluable. I mean, I don't know what day this is today in it, maybe four, nine, maybe 11. I, I don't know the number for sure, but I'll say this. These things have been outstanding. And um, the, the coaching going on, the, the kids, the learning, the ability of 20 hours a week, uh, obviously until tomorrow, but uh, 20 hours a week of teaching, it's been awesome. It's, it hasn't been spring ball because obviously you can't hit and things of that nature. But the mental part of it has been probably better than even what spring ball would have been about learning the offense uh, for Kendall. And, and uh, you know, I'm having to learn it too. And uh, so I'm, I'm pretty much caught up to speed. So I imagine the players will be too. We've, we've heard some reports that, you know, Ricky Stromberg is getting a lot of work at center. Um, you know, what, what's the logic behind that move? And then Ty Clary, where do you see him fitting in uh, for next season? Well, Ty's playing center for us. And, um, you know, we haven't put the pads on. So we're trying to find our five best players on the offensive line and then number six and number seven and all that. But um, you can't have your third or second best player playing behind your best player just because he plays left tackle. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. So we're trying to find our five best. And the hardest place to play on the O-line is center. And so we're trying to develop uh, at least three centers. Uh, if we could get more uh, in the top ten, we would do that too. But we're trying to at least be able to travel and have three deep at center. And therefore, <clears throat> we started looking at Ricky at center, and he's played a lot of it. Uh, in these walkthroughs for us. And Ty obviously has played center as well. And so I'm sure if that was the case that they both would stay at center, they'd have a competitive battle there. And then you'd have to look to see if the one who didn't win the center spot, is he in our top five uh, to play for us? Awesome. Thank you, coach. Thank you. Hey coach, how you doing? Hey Trey. So I was curious a little bit about that schedule. Uh, I don't expect you to like lay it all out for us right now, but are you thinking like, you know, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, you mentioned you'd have two off days. Like how, how do you kind of plan to structure that? Three, there's six, six weeks, I guess. So I'm looking at three, three, five, four, five, five. And different weeks, we're, we're trying to keep Sunday as the day off, Saturday, for the most part, uh, well, early Saturday as your two-day meeting. Uh, as we start scrimmaging and doing things on Saturday, then Thursday would be our day off there along with Sunday. Sunday will always be uh, a day, our day off uh, during camp. And recently the roster was released and there was a lot, of, a lot of fluctuation in the weights from just in the spring. I was wondering if you could comment on on some of those guys, you please with what you've seen with the weight. I know, like Jalen St. John was up at three fifty nine. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's a weight that you want him at, but uh, can you just comment on that? <laughs> well, uh, we want to put weight on our offensive linemen again. Uh, I'm not saying a two hundred seventy five pound man can't block a three hundred fifteen or thirty pound man. I'm not saying that, but I would like to have a little bit more anchor. Uh, obviously, everybody. I would assume knows that I like big offensive linemen. Uh, but uh, Jalen, we're, wor we're working with him. He, you know, we, we, he's with our nutritionist, all that. He's, he's big, and uh, we're working with him maybe to take a little bit of weight off so he could be, get his foot speed better. But the other guys, you know, like Myron, Myron, I don't know how many pounds he's gained, but uh, I'm looking at 285 to 315, 320. Maybe even bigger, but depends on how much running we do, you know, after walkthroughs. But all of them, you know, Ricky, if you look at Ricky, and he, I heard he was 260 and he's right at 300. He might be a little bigger than 300. So, but the key is not only 
are they getting bigger, but can they move, you know, and, and, and not lose that quickness and gain more power. I've been really, really pleased. Of course, Jamil Walker, I'm, I think we have as good a strength coach as anybody in the country. And, and, uh, but our kids have done a good job and they're all, they've all gained weight. I thought we needed a bigger football team. I think if you look at our team, we do have speed. Uh, but I thought we needed to get bigger uh, to compete in this league, and, and we're certainly headed that direction. Thanks, Coach. You're welcome. Demetrius? How you doing, Coach Pittman? What's up, man? Uh, I was just curious, uh, out of the, since the season, you know, practice just started, who are some of the emerging leaders? And then out of those leaders, who are maybe some guys that you have potentially looking at as team captain? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. You know, uh, let's start with defense first. Uh, um, McClellan, uh, Bush, Mo Brown, those guys in the secondary have really they, – they're, they're as hard a working group as we have. So I'm, I'm really impressed with them. Um, Newcomer-wise, uh, Jerry, Jerry Jacobs has been – a, a, a nice leader. If you go at linebacker, uh, pulls done well. Um, I mean, how do you know they're not hitting? But I'm talking about learning and being on time and talking to the team. I'm assuming that's what you're asking. Uh, Draper's been good. Kelly Xavier Kelly's been outstanding. John Marshall uh, on the on the defensive line front uh, on offense. Uh, Franks. Has, has done a good job, and, and uh, of course, Rakeem. And then the line, it's kind of hard to, to um, segment out a guy in there because they're all – they work well together. Uh, Myron would be the guy there possibly that would have, at this point, the most leadership skills along with uh, Dalton Wagner. All right, thanks, Coach. You're welcome. Bob. Hey, hey, Sam, how you doing? Good, good to see you. Hey, Bob. Uh, we were talking to Hunter Yurchek the other day, and he was uh, really praised you for how you're, you know, leading the program through all this uh, unprecedented stuff we're dealing with. And it's your first time as an SEC head coach. What is it you've drawn upon, you know, in your background that's enabled you to to kind of navigate through all this as well as you've done so far? Oh, I guess my parents, you know, I mean, to be honest with you, it's, um, you know, I always said, don't make a mountain out of a molehill. You know, you, the bottom line is you have problems with problems when you don't address the first one and then it becomes a second one. Then it becomes a third one and you get behind in what you probably should address in the first place. It might, you might not have had the second problem. So we're hand, we're handling as best we know how, um, everything that's coming across and it and y'all know it happens daily daily there's so much stuff that happens every day especially with all the different scenarios that's going on in the world and so communication we we have no problem talking to our players just exactly like you and I are talking right now and so we're pretty much an open book here and and uh, we talk to our kids and explain why we're doing things and why we have to adjust and they, to be honest with you, they're the ones that, that need to be um, patted on the back because they everything that we've done, they just said, okay, coach, we, we trust you. This is what we should do. And, and I think that, that says a lot about our coaching staff, uh, certainly more than about me. I guess maybe a follow-up to that. seems like every day you hear about Louisville shutting down practice because, you know, kids went to a party or – you know, um, Rutgers is doing it, or whoever it might be. Well, a lot of schools are having these issues. Uh, you haven't had that issue yet here at Arkansas. How happy does that make you? And just what do you think has been the key to that? I'll tell you what, I don't know what's been the key, but I'm ecstatic about how we've handled COVID. Now, Hunter's going to he, – he's got more specifics about that, but um, – 
it's, you know, it's something that you sure would like to happen, but obviously it's not happening over, over every place in the, in the world or in America or in football. Uh, but uh, we've done a nice job, and I'll leave it at that. And I'm very, very proud of our staff, our building, the people in our building. I mean, it's not just the football team. It's the secretaries, the strength staff, the, the medical staff. I mean, a lot of people here, and they're all, all – uh, being really, uh, really, really good about uh, the mask and, and handling this virus. Thanks. Yeah, if you got time, you know, come back around. Okay. <laughs> Otis. Coach Fribben. Yes, sir. Status is Quellen McGee. Sir? But Quellen McGee, you signed him in February, but yeah. he had in the yeah. roster. Mm -hmm. Jaqueline is not on our team and I, I I don't I don't believe that he'll be on our football team uh, okay okay thanks coach Hutch? Yeah, Coach, I was curious now that you've had a, a few walkthrough practices and everything. Have, have y'all settled in on a, a, a base defense, like whether it's going to be a three- or four-man front or anything like that? No. Do you know have a timeline for when y'all would like to, to have a, a base defense, or does it take like actually having practices in camp and stuff? I don't know if we know what we are for sure yet. You know, I'm, I mean, again, do you have – three outstanding players and you're running a three, three man front or do you have four? Do you want to get it? Do you have a big enough size to do that? Do you have the quickness right now? We are practicing multiple defenses because I think that's in all honesty, Andrew, I think that's what we're going to run. I think we're going to be a multiple defense. And I think what you're going to end up doing uh, is going, okay, 42% of the time they run this front, 35% of the time they run that front. To be honest, if you look back in Barry Odom's history, it's been that way ever since he was a defensive coordinator. So if I knew exactly what we're doing, and I've got an idea, but um, percentage-wise, it would probably end up being pretty heavy in, in at least two different fronts, possibly three. And then also, you talked about finding your best five on the offensive line. Uh, what, when, at what point of camp would you like to maybe settle in on, on that five and, and not have guys switching around and stuff? Well, with your, with your first five, you'd probably like to do that no later than two and a half weeks before your first game. Um, the other guys, six, seven, eight, they'll always swing. I mean, they'll be – until you can get 10 good offensive linemen, you'll have your third tackle and you'll have your third guard and you'll have your second center guard combination, all those things. So I'd like to settle in uh, maybe two, two and a half weeks before the first game with exactly what we're going to do. And, of course, you know the injuries disrupt all that. So – um, therefore, you have to have your third best tackle that can play both sides, et cetera. So, I hope I answered your question. Yep. Thanks, Coach. Carlos. Hey, Coach. Good to see you. Uh, looking what's happening around the country in other sports, not allowing fans or spectators. How much of an advantage Arkansas is going to have, especially when playing away and not having the, the opponent that you're facing, you know, 40, 60,000 fans cheering for them? How much of an advantage will be for your team uh, not having fans in the stand uh, when you play away? Well, first of all, I, I do not know what the stand, the fan status is here away or not but certainly uh if the fans aren't able to go to the game and it's and you're not dealing with crowd noise it certainly would be a more 
advantageous for for the visiting football team than what it would if there was. But obviously, I'm hoping that that COVID, uh, you know, that we get a, a fix to this, and and uh, like everybody else is, and and we can have a lot of people in the stands. But I don't, I do not know that answer at all. And obviously, safety would be the main thing. But you're right. If there's less fans in the stadium on the road. You're you, you should, your communication should be better. And uh, last, I don't know if you have been able to uh, uh, see any any Latino kickers in the state that might got your attention. Obviously, I popped this question whenever you were presented, but, you know, we haven't had a Latino kicker uh, since Alex Tejada. Uh, can you comment on that? Um, I really can't talk about recruits, but um, – if they can kick, we're, we're going to recruit them. I promise you that. And I'm not talking about they Latinos. I'm talking about they whoever's. I mean, whoever can kick, we're going to take them. And uh, uh, certainly. A few, Coach. I will send them your way. Come on. Help. Thank you. Thank you. Aiden. Hey, Coach. How are you? Uh, good to see you. I know – Last season, obviously, Georgie uh, coached a couple of first-rounders, and now there's been a few, not a ton, but a few maybe first-round draft prospects that have decided to sit out this season. Um, have you had any guys talk to you about, Coach, is it a good idea if I sit out this year, or, or is everyone 100% on board with, with playing this season? As of right now, today, I haven't had anybody uh, express any um, concern about them not play, I mean any any interest in not playing this season good deal my last one for you just um we all know the grind of fall camp and just how it goes and with practice moving back um just how excited are you uh just to get out there be on the field coach them be there with them and uh have a little bit of sense of normalcy when you guys get on the field yeah it's not it's going to be unbelievable um you know you may or may not understand, but when you when you work a twelve to fourteen hour day and you're and you're doing it again and you're sweaty and you're with a group of guys all towards the same vision that you have and the players and you see them getting better and you go in the locker room uh, with your coach's locker room and the camaraderie you have in there, we've missed that and. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. And yes, I'm looking forward to a 14 hour day and it is what it is. It's, it's what we do. We've done it. I've done it for a long time and I miss it. And so do our coaches and yeah, we're looking forward to it. Coach, thanks very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, Wood. Uh, hi, Coach Pittman. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about the development of the quarterback so far? And secondly, could you give us a couple of guys who've maybe stood out or maybe even surprised you by their play? Well, we haven't been able to, you know, we, anything full speed, we're not allowed to be there. So uh, it's not positive how they're throwing the football, but how they're running the offense. Uh, all of them have done a really good job. Um, you know, I've been really pleased with how K.J. Jefferson's uh, – uh, picked up the offense and sees where he's supposed to go with the ball and those things of that nature and and of course we're really happy that Felipe Franks is here he's he's doing a really good job but you know you look at Malik and John and and uh, and so I think we're doing pretty good up there and 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 Jack Lindsay they're all doing good but but uh, the, the Kendall's Brown's offense is not that hard to learn it's just fast and so. Uh, you have to know it, the ins and outs of everything because he's going to snap the football and you, you you need to understand where you're supposed to go pretty fast. Uh, and secondly, is there is there anybody that's uh, maybe stood out or even surprised you? Uh, maybe a couple on offense, a couple on defense uh, in, in, in the workouts. Yeah, and guys, I hate, I hate to be – vague and this and now that you guys realize we've been walking walkthroughs so i mean 
it's hard to, you know, I, I could name the guys that are doing really well mentally and all that, but it's really hard to figure out if we who can play good and who can't. We're, we're in a walkthrough with no pads. So, uh, but with that said, I've been pleased with uh, how – I like our running back group. I like them. Um, and oh, I think we can have some depth at, at linebacker. I love our secondary, the way they work. Uh, I think we're going to have some depth at O-line. And uh, wide wide receiver-wise, I think we, we've got to get more depth there. I think everybody believes we're talented there uh, with the, the front – few guys, uh, we've got to develop some depth there. And then the D-line is probably the one that I've been the most happy with as far as what I my mind might have thought how we're going to be versus uh, how we're doing right now. I, I, that, that group, I think, is doing really well. Hey. Yeah, you're on mute if you're going to talk. Take a little diet Mountain Dew. Here we go. How, Here we Sam, go. how do you feel about that? just Tyson Morris as far as the film of you saw of him last year? Kind of where do you feel he could fit in this offense? Well, he's playing wide receiver. Um, I think he's he got speed. And he's big. Uh, he's done a nice job for us. Uh, uh, what we do, uh, everybody, is is in our walkthroughs, we, we split them. So there's basically whom you might on the depth chart have as a one, and then the freshman, and then the twos and the threes. Now, the depth chart's been moved all over the place because how, do you, how would you have a depth chart right now? But you have to have one to go to practice. So uh, all these people – all the kids are getting reps and Tyson has looked good in there. And, and I, I, I tell you, he's done a nice job in the walks and special team as well. So uh, we're proud of him and, and think he's going to help us. At White Thanks. Thanks. All right. Uh, if you've got questions and we haven't gotten to you, hit me up in the chat and, and we'll get to you. But uh, we'll get going back around here. Tom, you want to lead us off round two? That'd be great. Thanks. So, Sam, if the scheduling um, uh, pattern holds up, Arkansas would have picked up Georgia next year. And if they follow that, you might end up playing Georgia. What would your thoughts be of, uh, if, if they wound up being on the schedule for you this year? Well, Depends on where we played them, you know. If we if we went if we went to Georgia, it'd be nice to go back and see all the people there, and and uh, you know they have an incredible fan base. Um, if they came here, they're if they're allowed, they're going to travel in. I'm going to be telling the Arkansas fans to sell that thing out because if not, it'll be loaded with Georgia fans, you know. But uh, you know, I have fond memories of Georgia. Um, uh, they were good to me, the entire state, and of course Kirby Smart. And and if we played them a year earlier than what I thought, then we'd look forward to playing them. When the time comes for full contact, um, in recent years, it's kind of been you know a little bit more compartmentalized, a little bit less. How do you feel about how much full contact you're going to need? And do you think more guys will have face shields and just stuff like that to prevent a uh, body? You know, now we have middle. them now. We have face in our walks now. Um, um, what was the first part of your question? Well, the first part of it was about how much live tackling, full contact stuff you're going to need. And I think sometimes you have different people who have different beliefs about tackling. My, you know, anytime you you don't scrimmage live, your your main concern is going to be because if you're an old D lineman and you're in shells, you're and you're full speed. I mean, you know what I mean. Uh, but you're concerned about who can hang on to the football, you know, and you're concerned about who can tackle. Uh, we have a defensive staff that believes they can teach tackling in their individual drills. 
Uh, so we have to we have to decide how many times we're going to scrimmage. Uh, our depth may not be quite what we'd like right now. So then you have to take that in consideration how many times you're going to tackle live to the ground. But it is a part of football, tackling and hitting and and hanging on the ball is a part of football. So you have to be ready uh, once you go out there. So there's a fine line in there. I think we're going to do a lot of individual tackling, a lot of uh, individual tackling on our running backs. Uh, what, a lot of times what causes injury is a guy leg whips another guy, a guy falls on the ground, he falls on the knee, this, that, and the other. So we're going to try to get our tackling and ball handling as much as we can um, done without having to do it uh, full team, full live. We will have at least one, probably two scrimmages. Uh, I don't know that we'll get to three. I'm, to be honest with you, I'm just concerned about our depth. Gotcha. And the last thing I have, you mentioned the D-line being, you know, some, something that impressed you. What was it you saw that made you think that way? Well, I think Jonathan Marshall's done a really good job, you know. Um, uh, and then if you look at him and Isaiah Nichols and, and Eric Gregory, Xavier Kelly, Coates, I mean, those guys, uh, I, I'm just saying what, what my mind might have thought where they would be at this point. I don't think that about them. I think that they, you know, they're big. Uh, they're they're uh, guys that understand. They can move for their size. And I just feel like uh, uh, they can be a good group. Okay. Appreciate it, man. Yes, sir. Kyle Dagelbaum. Hey, Coach, I want to ask a little bit more about Felipe. I just, uh, you know, someone coming off that kind of injury, uh, transfers to make the most of one season. You know, how is he approaching things right now? I would imagine he's, he's pretty excited. The plan is to have a season. He's approaching it like a guy that's been a SEC starter for two-plus years. I mean, he's a grown man. He's, he's mature. Uh, he's approaching it like he's been there before. And uh, I think that's very important for us, especially – because we didn't have spring ball, but we have a guy on our football team that's played a lot of football at quarterback and won a New Year's Day Bowl as the starting quarterback. Um, we got a veteran guy, and, and I think that's important. I did not just say that he's won the starting job. How can you do that in walkthrough? But I did say that we're awful glad he's on our football team. When we, uh, when we last talked to Hunter Juracek, I think he mentioned there was one player um, one of your guys currently in quarantine. Is there uh, any update you can give? I mean, are all guys green lighted as far as practicing in you know about a week? Um, no, I mean Hunter will have to address that. But uh, like I said before, we're 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 in a good spot. All right, thanks, Dudley. Hey, coach. Appreciate you doing this. Good to see you. Hey, Dudley. The uh, obviously it's been a different uh, recruiting landscape for you with this COVID, but you've had a lot of success over the summer. Can you just talk about the success y'all have had as a staff? And uh, also, the uh, the state seems to have a lot of young talent. Uh, just just talk about maybe what you've seen in that regard from maybe when you were here the last time. Well, again. I've I mean, it's hard. Recruiting's recruiting's hard if you can have them on campus and call them all the time. It's hard regardless of what because of who you're competing against. Um, but uh, we're pleased with where we are right now in recruiting, and and uh, uh, we're well aware that our state is very talented, and uh, we're trying to get our kids to stay home and play for the Razorbacks. Appreciate it. Matt Jones. I want to see Matt on here. Matt, you're on mute. Who is he? I'm pretty sure he's still on mute. Matt, we'll come back. Bob? 
Uh, hey, yeah, thanks. I think I'm unmuted there. Sam, you mentioned, I remember when, when you moved Blaine to tight end, you mentioned how unselfish he was and just wanted to do whatever he could for the team. Um, and I guess he never actually played there, like you said, but now that he's back at defensive end, how, how do you react when you guys said, we, we, want to, we want to put you back there? And kind of what do you anticipate from him at, at that position? Well, I think he's going to be a really good player. And I, I talked him into wearing number 96 whenever he moved over there because I wore 96. Nobody knows it because I wasn't any good or anything, but my college number was 96. So I told him he had big shoes to fill if he wore 96, so he, he took it. And so we were just trying to make it kind of loose and loose a little bit because we wanted him to go back over to defense. And to be honest with you, that's where he wanted to be, but he was so unselfish, he went to tight end. So. We put 96 on and moved him back over defense, and he's fine. He's doing really good. You mentioned uh, Coates, you know, has been a, among the defensive linemen that's impressed yeah. you. I know he had a lot of sacks at Juco, um, and I know it's his walkthroughs, but how, how has he looked? What are you anticipating from him? I love him. I mean, he's done He's done really well. Um, you run out there in, in, at different times, and you have Marshall and Nichols and Kelly and Coates. Uh, those guys are big guys, you know. I mean, they can hold up against the size of the SEC offensive linemen, and and they can move. So I've been really pleased with Coach, and and uh, he's working awful hard. Did well today in the in the team run this morning. How's how's Dorian Gerald doing? He um yeah. he obviously had a very serious injury last year, but. I see him tweeting, so I guess he's doing okay. What, what, what's, what's no, the and, I, and to be honest with you, in these meetings, there's so many guys to talk about, and I miss, I miss Dorian, and and I shouldn't have. He's he's really, really looks good. Uh, he's got a tremendous uh, foot speed, and uh, and he he's another guy that should be a leader on our football team. Very vocal guy, and he's been working his tail off, so. I've been really pleased with him, of course, and I will be when we put pads on, but we haven't yet. But I, I promise I will be. He's 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 too talented for us not to be. Okay, thanks, Sam. I'll see what I can do about getting a Pitt State to retire '96. That won't happen. <laughs> Nobody wants to wear it. But <laughs> Trey Biddy. Hey, Coach. If I remember, you had actually quite a bit of sacks in number 96 at Pitt State. <laughs> you spelled yourself too short. <laughs> hey, uh, I was wondering about Felipe's status in terms of his eligibility moving forward because if I understand the new revised six-year rule, wouldn't he qualify for a potential six-year? Um, possibly. Um I don't think I, – I think if he has a good year, which we anticipate him doing, that, you know, he'll he'll be gone. But uh, I'm glad you mentioned that. I have to look into that. But in all honesty, I'm planning on him, uh, if he wins a starting job, to have such a good year that we can't keep him. That's my plans. That sounds nice. <laughs> and with Toll, was it just with – was that decision made with Jaqueline not making it to campus? And 100%. Sorry? 100%. 100%. Okay. 100%. When, when Jaqueline decided that he didn't want to play football anymore, then we moved Blaine Toll that day. You probably hate this question, but – because it's about asking for specific players, but – Redshirt freshman that didn't play a lot last year, just based on what you've seen from maybe guys assuming the leadership roles like you were talking about earlier and guys who did really strong in the weights and all that stuff, is there anybody that you could see emerging that didn't really contribute last year? That redshirted Gatlin, done well. I've been impressed with Luke Jones. I don't know if he redshirted. I think he was more of a transfer. Yeah, he redshirted. He transferred. Uh, who else up there would, would have red-shirted last year? i tell you who's been doing good is Carter. Um, Torian? Uh, yeah. I mean, he's done well. Um, who, who else am I missing, uh, Kyle? Who, uh, Catalan. Yeah. He's doing well. 
I, I, it's it's a hard question for me because I can't really remember who who redshirted last year, but the young guys, those will be some of them. Uh, that off the Marcus Miller, you know he's back, ready to go. He's moving well. Um, so those would be the guys I, I'd guess Trey right off the top of my head. And and lastly, Hunter mentioned the other day that he thinks that the recruiting dead period could be extended out to December 31st. What are your thoughts on that? You think a decision should be made for four months and ahead? And, and what do you think the ramifications would be as far as signing periods? I think the reason people want camps, and I'm not saying in COVID times, I'm not saying that. I'm saying the reason that you want camps in the summer on a regular basis is so you can evaluate prospects and there's a difference in a highlight tape and actually what he is sometimes he's better than what his tape looked like sometimes he's not sometimes he's about what you thought so I do think there's going to be more than ever um, surprises that you thought uh, uh, that you got this particular athlete and you were surprised one way or the other because you didn't actually get to see them in the specific skill set that you wanted. And I think that's across the board with, with everybody. And you might go back to sophomore when they were on camp at camp. You know, you look at speed. How do you really know how fast they are unless you have a verified time and all that kind of stuff? You can get done on your own campus. Uh, we're not able to do that. The, the other thing certainly is if they keep early signing date and there's no official visits, it's kind of hard for a kid to make a decision to me. Uh, so we, we, had to, we had to really level them up. We had to get to know them because right now, if it's not about anything other than the personal relationship with the people that's recruiting them, then we have to be better than anybody else at it. Thanks, Coach. All right, Matt Jones, we're going to try it again. Matt, you there? All right, Matt's having trouble. Uh, Tom, do you have any more? I'll, fi I'll finish with this one. Um, what have you thought of Hunter's, Hunter's leadership during all this? It's a, a period of time like we've never gone through before, and it, I'm sure it's tough on ADs. I'd say he's probably met more over, over the computer than he ever would have thought in his life. I'm not speaking for him, but. I know this, that when we when I go into an SEC head coaches meeting, what they're telling me, for the most part, I already know. Uh, he's a great communicator. He's a great speaker. Uh, we had him over and talked to our team um, early part of this week or late, latter, latter part of last week. And uh, he's been very good to me, very good to our, our coaching staff. And... Um, I couldn't imagine having to be the first time head coach and going through this without with anybody else but him because I think he's done unbelievably a great job. Um, you've gotten a lot of recruits uh, commitments lately from Oklahoma. Um, any particular thing that has gone into that that has helped spur that? Um. Well, it is one of our regional states. And uh, so, our, you know, right now, if you were sitting there and you couldn't go out and visit, your parents are probably going to be a little more comfortable if you commit to a school that they can drive to and the convenience of, of uh, being able to get back and forth from games. Uh, but, you know, I'm from Oklahoma. and. Uh, 
I wasn't one of those guys that Arkansas offered a scholarship to, by the way. I wanted them to, but they didn't. But I still am from Oklahoma, and uh, it's it's just been kind of ironic that we, you know, that I can't. I don't know what I can say about recruiting. It's just specific kids, right? Yeah. It's just kind of been ironic that we're doing pretty good in the state of Oklahoma, um, because you know Missouri borders us, Louisiana borders us, all that, but. You know, John Cooper's from Oklahoma. I'm from Oklahoma. Barry Odom's from Oklahoma. So we, we have some ties there that's that's helped us. I don't know if things have gotten to this point, but let's just say during the season there's an outbreak and a coach or two has it. Are there plans in place where your uh, graduate assistants or someone can come up and be the guy that week on, on field and stuff? Yeah, you have to have that. You you. You know, it's just like on offense, depending on if Kendall's going to be on the field or up in the box. You, if, you know, if he's on the field, you better have somebody else that knows, uh, you know, the offense as well as he does and able to signal it. Uh, our quarterbacks are certainly responsible for that as well. Uh, but uh, what the NCAA has done, if – somebody has a virus, well, then somebody else can step in and it's kind of like an emergency situation and all that. But, you know, you have Barry Odom, if something happened to me, you know, well, you have Barry that would step into that role. And that's why we're two spotting. That's why we're everybody on our teams getting the same amount of reps in these walkthroughs because if COVID, if COVID is, you know, if COVID happens on our football team, um, the next guy has to be available and he has to know what he's doing. All right. With the staff, the players, everybody. That wraps me up. Kyle, Sam, thank y'all. Thank you, Tom. All right. That's going to wrap us up. I uh, appreciate everybody. Good to see a few faces. We, uh, we're getting closer to some sort of football or at least looking like football. So appreciate everybody. If you need anything, please let me know. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, everybody. All right. Have a great have a great day. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks,